Carlos Rodon was the story. He said it in the post-game interview. He wanted to keep his emotions in check. He was masterful tonight, Pedro. He was great, and it's exactly what we want to see from here on uh, uh, from Mr. Rodon. And I'm glad he could probably have someone that is that is that you have in the team, that veteran, that you can pick mm -hmm. their brains. He saw what Garrett Cole did, probably asked the question, and Garrett Cole was able to tell him, just compose yourself, preserve energy. And, and it's so good. That's why there's another value to, to those aces. Sure. Because whenever you Wisdom. struggle, you have someone to, to, to ask for whatever information you need, and he got it. But look, I noticed that it wasn't just in-game that he was doing this. This was, I, I think, a strategy from before the game because you watch the catcher. He's trying to slow him down. Look, he's just a slowing him down to make sure that he does what he needs to do and he keeps his composure during the game. You can see it clear. Someone told the catcher that he needed to add a little bit of his mentality back there to, to help him slow down his, his emotions. And, and this Guardians lineup is no cakewalk to get through. It starts with Stephen Kwan leading off the first at bat. He worked a nine pitch at bat. They lean on you. They make you work. Definitely does. And, and, and that's something you see. They're determined to do that. And I, I think they know the recipe of Rodon. They faced him for you know years when he was with the White Sox. They know his makeup. They know he can mm. get excitable. You wear him down. You may him, make him exert a lot of energy. You can get ahead, but he kept his composure, six innings pitch, um, nine Ks, no walks, one earned run. This is something we had questions about before the game, and rightfully so, but he answered those questions because this is not an easy lineup, mm -hmm. but he was working. He's talking about the catcher just taking that little bit of a half a second. Sure. He's not getting and throwing, getting back on the mound. Nope. Here you go. Now we're ready. You put the pitcher in a rhythm, and it worked out tonight. Aaron Boone has managed these October games beautifully so far. It was Clay Holmes in the seventh, then to Tim Hill, and then to Luke Weaver for a five-out save. Textbook. Well, textbook. You know, you draw it up before the game. And then? And then <laughs> something usually happens. And then you rip it up. <laughs> yeah, and then you rip it up. But tonight it worked exactly like they wanted it to work. And I got to give the catcher a lot of credit, like Pedro and, and, and Jimmy said. The game doesn't start until the pitcher gets the ball. So if you can, like, you know, kind of take the air take out of the beat. ball, boom, take your time, boom, now go back at them. Mm, before the game, we were talking about the wind. You know all about it at Yankee Stadium. Uh, we spied on our TBS cameras. It was kind of a crosswind blowing out to right, and it calmed down. But a few of Big G's hits, we thought were out. We stood up for a second. It's interesting because it was blowing it and was. it was whipping, especially if you look at the fans or the flags up there. You got a sense that, okay, this is really going to affect the ball today, but it didn't really affect it too much. Soto got enough of his ball. The wind might have helped a little bit, but it was enough. The one Stanton finally crushed, didn't need any it help. Crushed. But we thought he had a couple there early on. The fans thought he had a couple, but it just didn't get enough. And then just Stanton just said, you know what, just let me just go ahead and muscle it. Let me put yeah. these big muscles on it and take care of it. I don't need Mother Nature to help me out. That's right. Game one spoken for. You don't have to wait long for game two. Back to back. Game two of the ALCS is tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern time. Our coverage begins when, Jimmy? Our pregame. Get to know me, 6.30 on Tuesday <laughs> night. It is a date. We can't wait to bring it to you on TBS. Carlos Rodon was rolling. It's fastball slider, and we talked about him incorporating the change. When all three are working, they're tough to honor. It is, and I thought he did a good job going to both sides of the plate, especially mm. with the lefties in the lineup. Like, you got to be able to go ahead and keep them off balance, especially if the wind is blowing and people are thinking right field at Yankee Stadium. Get them looking in, go away. Start them away, come in. That's what adds. Now you can start throwing the different pitches in there. Austin Wells made a nice stop. And on the other side for the Guardians, we saw a few pass balls, and we were watching it mm -hmm. together. And you said what about the catchers? They're taught different? Or well, they're taught, taught differently. You know, they're taught to try to frame pitches and steal pitches versus mm -hmm. blocking because blocking doesn't seem to be nearly as important as it used to be. But to me, blocking is always important because the guy is going to advance a base here. It calls two runs, you know, right here. I mean, this was something that I hadn't seen very often. 
uh, in the situation. And see right there, he tried to pick it versus blocking it. And, and, and you see it every day. And I kind of wish some of the kids would go back to, you know, catching the conventional way of You catching. know, some uh, say analytics favor a guy on a knee because they can frame better. You're shaking your head yes. Because yeah, everything agree. he's saying is right. And, you know, in, in my time, Yadi Molina, he would set up to frame, okay. but he would always be ready to block. There are certain pitches that, yes, you're just going to have to pick. The ball is going to be there. A spike fastball. You're not expecting a spike fastball. Mm -hmm. You might have to pick that. But on breaking balls, when you're expecting it to come, and you're just kind of leaning into it instead of, like Dusty said, the importance is the ball in front of you, especially with a runner on third. That ball cannot get behind you. Right. You can see, especially as a catcher, it's not a strike out of his hand. At that point, your mind goes from framing to defense, and they don't play defense because it says, we're going to steal these pitches, try to work these umpires to get these strikes, and it, and it works at times. But when it doesn't, runner on third, that pass ball gets in. Those are free runs. That's a completely different ball game, mm. and that changed, in my opinion, the outcome of a lot of those uh, runs or a couple of runs that came across. That's a complete different ball game if he goes from frame to defense. How do you want your catcher set up, Pedro? I, I want the catcher to give me a target. And, and, and the, 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 the most important thing is if you can hit your target, but they have a pretty young group of arms in that bullpen, a lot of velo don't command the strike zone as good as they would like to, not yet. And at the same time, it's a little combination when you have six walks in the first four innings, and then you're bouncing balls all over the place, and the catchers are not really taught to block those balls. It's a lethal combination. Wild pitches with walks. Three of the, the six walks ended up scoring, whether it was because of the wild pitches or because they were little walks or too many walks, just, just way too many walks. I'm surprised the Yankees could not put a bigger number on, on the Cleveland Guardians with that amount of walks. If they continue to do that, this season is this this series is going to be over pretty soon. Mm -hmm. They have to reduce the amount of walks that they that they're giving up. The Yankees had it all working. Juan Soto started the party. Rarely does a team identify a talent that they need that's tailor made to play there and it works to perfection like it has this season for Juan Soto. It's amazing. We kept saying left-handed bats. You need left-handed bats. They got Verdugo and Soto and I think this is one of the biggest acquisitions because one he's one of the best players in the game but he sees he takes pitches he doesn't chase out of the zone he's going to stare you down he said he went to the pitch three mm -hmm. times in a row and then he was ready for it he's a smart hitter yes, for being is. as young as he is and also Frank Cor mentioned it this is a team that leads the league and walks so they're going to be sitting in the zone and when they finally do get pitches in the zone that's why they lead the league in homers when they get pitches to hit, they don't miss. They don't chase too far out of the zone. And he's one of the best at doing it. Free agent at season's end, and he's going to get what? Jimmy Rollins. He is going to get a billion dollars. <laughs> a sneak peek at Juan Soto's deal this offseason. And fans, Yankee fans have started GoFundMe pages all over the internet. And they're really? up to yeah, up to thirty thousand dollars. That's not gonna get it Where's done. Where's the money going? Uh, who's, the, who's the GoFundMe going to? <laughs> to Juan Soto to <laughs> resign him for the Yankees, but thirty thousand. I mean, yeah. call me crazy. Right? Hey, take it. It might go to you, Curtis. Hey, you know, I mean, Soto's still playing. He's under contract. Yeah. We're free agents. Yeah. We'll take it. You know, <laughs> we'll take thirty grand. Oh uh, yeah. Send it our way. October G's different, Jimmy. Why? Yes, he is. Why? I, look. That is a question I don't want to have to try to answer, and I don't want to be the guy on the mound because he is not missing. We know what he can do when he's locked. He's a very streaky guy, but in October, he turned streakiness to heat. He's just a heat sensor. He missed a couple balls tonight, but when he gets it, and you know, he just, he just turns into big G like Hercules and just powers through it. It doesn't matter what the wind is doing, but this is, it's a short moment, and he loves the moment. He said it. I love this moment. Yeah, but see, I think it's about increased concentration and and discipline at the plate and relaxation because this guy feels relaxed in this situation and in this environment and when a guy's relaxed he can do almost anything he wants to do. Wow, and those the, you and I here. were talking and and first of all it was about Rodon mm -hmm. where he needs to stay you know control his emotions right and you said to me if he can right well Giancarlo son seemed to be not only healthy, but also he seems to be locked in and, and really focused on the things he needs to do to hit the ball. And at the same time, a lot of those 
those those guys that are pitching against them are not really controlling their emotions or they don't have the perfect attitude to face those big moments sometimes and they end up making mistakes whether it's because of lack of experience they don't execute the pitches and Gian Giancarlo takes it to the next level he's not at missing least, well, not, say, if they make mistakes he is not missing he is That's not right. missing. next level gear for Giancarlo Stanton so is your, he your daddy Pedro I mean uh, a strong yeah, daddy you have Ooh. two <laughs> games <laughs> of the day to he, hear what our he's fans a strong enough to, to carry all four of us <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you better you can't insult him